In this section, we're going to be covering employee and public protection. So as a farmer or an employer, these are things that you would have to keep in mind. As an employer, there are several things that you have to keep in mind. Your employees may need to be certified if they are applying restricted use pesticides or they are applying for money for hire, they must be certified. If you employ people in a farm situation, the worker protection standards kicks in. And in the worker protection standards, you must provide PPE for your agricultural employees. And you must also provide training. There has to be an information exchange system. In WPS, they require a central location where um, information about applications and where they are, time of day, and restricted entry intervals are posted so your employees can, um, can be aware of what's going on. Some pesticides are known as dual notification pesticides. These not only have to be posted, but they also have to, you have to warn your employees orally. So they require both ways of notification. If you employ over 10 employees, then the hazardous communication standards kick in. And there's a whole bunch of rules about this on how you notify employees of the hazards of a specific job. If you are using products that require respiratory protection, as an employer you must provide individual equipment to individual employees. Respiratory protection in the way of um, uh, masks and uh, filters and so forth. Now, protecting the public, this is another thing that we have to keep in mind. First thing that you have to keep in mind is you cannot give misleading claims of safety. If an individual comes to you while you're applying and asks questions, you do have to give them accurate and true answers. You cannot mislead them on the safety of a pesticide. Aerial application, there is a system of advance notification. If people request it, you have to provide advance notification of aerial applications. And then, of course, posting which can be somewhat complicated in itself. The worker protection standard, this is uh, designed to reduce the risk of agricultural employees who work in and around areas that have been treated with agricultural pesticides. The worker protection standard only applies to farms producing agricultural commodities, forests, greenhouses, and nurseries. Turf and landscape guys don't have to follow this, so they, they are, are exempt from uh, WPS. CCAs are exempt from a lot of the work protection standard uh, rules. Um, this has provided several things. Provided that your state, which Wisconsin does have, a CCA training system, an approved training system. Also, that they follow the other conditions of exemption as stated under 170.204.B2. Sorry, I threw a law at you. So as CCAs, you're not required to follow all the things from a work protection standard. But you are required to do certain things. You have to be certified or licensed as a CCA or certified or licensed as an applicator. Um, you cannot enter the area while an application is actually going on. Um, you can only enter in the area within the restricted entry interval when you are actually doing CCA duties. So for whatever other reasons you might be entering into that area, you do have to follow all the WPS standards. You must uh, determine what PP is required and let your employees know this. For instance, after an application, if you go in there before the restricted entry interval is expired, all the PPE is required and you must let your employees know that. 
you must have a, an established method of communicating um, safeties and ha uh, safety and hazards of applications with your employees. So these things are still required. They are components of the worker protection standard, but um, that it, but you're not uh, you're exempt from a lot of it also. WPS is for all employees on farms, forests that produce timber, greenhouses, and nurseries. However, a lot of farms are just the, the immediate family that work on the farm and there are no employees employed. Uh, immediate family is husband, wife, children, stepchildren. Sorry, cousins are not considered immediate family when it regards to work protection standard. They are considered employees. Now the immediate family is exempt from a lot of WPS. However, there are some things that they are not exempt from. They are still required to wear the uh, they are still required to wear the PPE that the label dictates. This is very important. Um, there are still restrictions during application. Individuals should not be in the in the treated area when an application is going on. Family members are still required to follow early entry restrictions, meaning the restricted entry interval, if it is not expired, they still have to wear the required PPE. And there still has to be uh, some sort of uh, exchange, but typically your uh, immediate family is exempt from employer information exchange, meaning that, uh, meaning that they probably consider you communicate with your husband, wife, children, and so forth without having to go through the actual full uh, worker protection standards. Farmers must provide all the protection that the WPS requires, mandates, and so forth. This includes providing full, complete PPE, free of charge. Can't charge your employees for the PPE they're wearing. This is uh, free of charge. An employer must provide first aid stations and there's rules and regulations on how far this can be from the application site or mixing site. Um, the employer must provide emergency response um, equipment, uh, spill equipment, uh, decontamination equipment. There are full rules and regulations on how much has to be there and how far this can be from the application site or mixing site. And then also the employer or the farmer must provide training. Um, this is part of work protection standard and this is uh, something that has to be uh, provided to the employees. Also, notification is very important. Um, there are certain notification rules. You have to post signs where applications occur uh, to inform employees uh, where these applications have uh, occurred and so that they don't wander into treated areas. Dual notice pesticides, I mentioned this in a couple of slides earlier. This is specific pesticides that require oral notification. So where do I find out what is a dual, not uh, dual notice uh, pesticide? Go to the agricultural use requirements on the label and search and it will dictate or it will tell you that oral uh, warnings must be provided. Now if it is a dual notice pesticide there is additional warning signs that have to be posted in the treated area. These are what's called the DAT cap uh, 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 notice signs and they will have to be posted above and beyond the typical um, uh, pesticide, WPS pesticide signs. Some examples of dual notice pesticides capture Empower, Lorzaban, Warhawk. There's not many, but there are a few that we use in agriculture that we might need to be aware of. So what does this look like? This is um, the DATCAP uh, dual notice uh, pesticide sign. It uh, is a certain size. There's dic dictation on how big it has to be, but it says warning, area treated with pesticides do not enter. You have to post these signs if there is any sensitive area, like a house, um, school, or any sensitive area within 300 feet of the treatment area. 
So these signs have to be posted if there is a sensitive area within 300 feet of the treated area and you are applying a dual notice pesticide. What this could look like is the warning sign can be applied um, within quarter mile intervals along the along the interface between the sensitive area and the treated area and then of course don't forget the WPS sign has to be posted at entries into that treated area. Now the WPS sign has to be po posted uh, until the REI restricted entry interval has um, has expired. Now you have to remove these signs before three days past the expiry of the REI. So you can't really leave these up for weeks. Um, you're supposed to re remove them within three days of the expiration of the REI. All right, well that's the end of this section and that's the end of the mini course. Um, I hope that this has helped. I hope you get through the kind of helped you get through the test and good luck on that CCA exam.